Saturday Night Live giveth and Saturday Night Live taketh away. For every Jim Belushi, it also gives us mm, about a half dozen Chris Kattans. For every Blues Brothers or Wayne's World it gives us, it also gives us a heaping dose of garbage like the stuff we're here to cover now. Today, terrible SNL movies you forgot existed. Get deep fat fried. You got a sour look on your face, Boo. buddy. Fire TJ. Fire Boo. TJ. What did I do? Boo. What did I do wrong? Boo. What did I do wrong? Because you, movie you dredged up these fucking road apples for us to sniff again. <laughs> uh, let's start with one you probably, you might remember because it is a sequel to a better movie. I'm not talking about Wayne's World 2. Didn't actually pull that one. Although I could have, I thought I thought Wayne's World Two had still had enough good about it that I didn't want to put it, lump it in with this crap. I don't think it's been forgotten either. But this one, uh, this is total garbage. This is Blues Brothers, two thousand. Oof. Um, we're a cash and band. I mean, tell me, tell me about it, dude. I I fucking love uh, John Goodman, but Jim Belushi, he ain't and. I love Dan Aykroyd, but Dan Aykroyd now is not Dan Aykroyd 30 years ago. Well, this is not even Dan Aykroyd. I mean, like, we're talking about a movie. This is 98 by this I know, point. Yeah, he'd already, he, he'd already lost his Dan Aykroydness by then. That's what I, I mean? mean. He was Aykroydless yeah. by 98. It had gone. And I love Dan Aykroyd, but he ain't no Dan Aykroyd. You know what I'm saying? And that dude on the right is the guy that uh, invents Skynet in T2. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, yeah. Fucking piece of and shit. And that what little, doing here? And that stupid little kid is some stupid little kid that yeah. shouldn't even be in the movie. Um, So, Blues Brothers 2000. That's the movie. The year, 1998. The review snippet that I chose. This sequel offers more of the same, only less. Ooh. That's from Variety. Box office, $14 million on a $31 million budget. There was a massive car crash scene in this movie, too. I think it was like one of the biggest ever in a film. You might be thinking about the first one. The I first thought, one has a cool, awesome, thought, gigantic I, I car they, crash scene. I thought scene. they did this one. Uh, they did that uh, in the sequel as well. Maybe they mm, did. Didn't they? Uh, they fucking. Maybe there was. No, not really. I don't okay, watch this. Maybe show. it's fucking garbage. I can tell you this. The first movie ends with like the most insane shit ever. Like the every fucking crazy motherfucker chasing the blues brothers all catches up to them at once. And there's like um, the, the blues brothers fucking pop out of their car. And there's like fucking literally like 200 cops around them. Like, this one ends with like them just kind of driving down the street. And there's like a few cops behind them. Maybe like, yeah, the Lord provides or whatever the fuck he says. And then it's just like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, I don't really remember we got your that. fucking money. So a little history. The Blues Brothers are an American blues and soul revivalist band founded in 1978 by comedians Dan Aykroyd and uh, John Belushi as part of a musical sketch on Saturday Night Live in 1980. I said the Jim Belushi again, didn't I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> the characters were uh, adapted into the film The Blues Brothers, which was both a box office hit and a critical hit that has since attained the status of cult classic, if not outright classic. 
So here is the trailer for this shitty, terrible fucking sequel. And it has so many copyrighted songs in it that we're going to have to kind of jump around. But copyrighted song number one. It's not the hats. Yeah. It's not the suits. Down and bound and bound and bump bump. It's not the glasses. It's the music. Oh, you mean it's the money? Sorry. Yeah. So this one actually did, I think, focus way more on the music than the original did. But you know what they forgot? The comedy. They forgot to be funny. Oops. <laughs> they forgot to be fucking Guys, funny. Where's the, where's the comedy at? If you watch this movie, it is a joyless. I mean, like, okay, I will admit some of the music is pretty nice in the fucking movie. Like, you could tell that's where, like, the majority of the focus went. But, like, there's no charm. There's no comedy. There's no character development. It shits on the entire fucking quest of the original Blues Because, like, the first Blues Brothers movie, they're trying to save the orphanage or whatever. And, like, in the first, like, two minutes of this movie, they're like, yeah, or after the orphanage shut down. It's like, what? So everything in the first movie was fucking pointless? Fuck you. Such is life. <clears throat> uh, but, yeah, they fucking... They try to make it look like it's got the same, like, madcap, like, whoa, it's crazy stuff going on here. I but there is vaguely a, remember, I remember this movie coming out. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, there's car chases and shit, but they're not even close to fucking the, the scale of the fucking first film, to be honest with you. I have never said that. I could show you all the moves. My God! Help us! This is Mighty Max. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, Yeah. This is the scene where this dude literally gets like blasted up to heaven and like transformed into a blues brother because he's like a cop. But then Sick. all of a sudden you're making this movie sudden, sound awesome. All of a sudden, like he's in the tent and then like the light of the Lord comes down and he like is blasted up into the sky and then just like transforms into a blues brother and just comes back down. It's like, I'm one of you guys now. And they're like, OK, awesome. It's like, all right, cool. It's not awesome. It's, oh. it, maybe it sounds awesome. You're probably imagining something way cooler in your head if you think it's awesome. Because it's, it's fucking not. I'm sorry. Damn, there's like hot bitches in what? this. What are you talking about, TJ? I'm oh, hey, okay. Scantily clad go women? fucking, go fucking, t give it a watch then. <laughs> go give it a watch. I mean, I'd, I skipped it because it looked like shit, but you're kind of selling me on jowls, it. jowls, dude. John Goodman's jowls, man. Um... It's a mess. It really is a fucking mess, to be honest with you. There's monster trucks? Yeah, there sure is. See, see that? I, I'm being like, look. You this, see this scene with this car doing this? Yeah. Where the car just like crap. There's like no reason for that to happen. Like it doesn't. It literally like it just comes out of nowhere. Like they're just driving the car and then suddenly they're like on a How ring of fire and then bad. suddenly they just like fall straight down out of the sky. Look, I got a big deal for you, TJ. Everything you've shown me about this trailer so far has convinced me this is a great film. You know what? Then go watch it. Go fuck it. If it I looks so it fucking you. good, go no, watch. No, I'm never watch watching it again. No, I want to watch it with you. I'm never watching it again. It's Ex so fucking boring. Dude, explosions, TNA. What There's more not really want? TNA now. We just uh, saw TNA. A guy goes up to heaven and comes back. I mean, there's not brother. actual. I mean, there might you might be some some like fucking PG thirteen level titillation. Oh, right. so there's not. Yeah, so there's, there's whatever you want in this movie. <clears throat> and that little kid is an annoying fuck. He has like two lines in the whole movie, but then at the end, we're supposed to believe that he's like forged some deep bond with fucking Elwood or whatever the fuck. So. He has. He, he did forge that deep. All right, whatever. Okay, so you know what? To punish you guys for trolling me with this, here you go. Oh. What the fuck, TJ? Yeah, suck on that. You're out of line, dude. This is oh, I think it, you're out of line, TJ. Actually, I think it, you're, you're, you're getting TJ. Stop it. This is out of line. Uh, time, time out on this episode, TJ. Are yeah. you really gonna, dude? No, 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 no. You're not making us look a superstar. Superstar. Dude. You you're are gonna not be super fucking superstar. This is a low blow, TJ. This Year is 1999. Review snippet. About as funny as an oozing fever blister. I agree. USA Today. Box office. Thirty million dollars. On a $14 million budget. You know what, TJ? Yeah. Sometimes I stick my hands in my armpits and then I smell them like this. 
Uh, History of the Bit, Mary Catherine Gallagher is a fictional character invented and portrayed by Saturday Night Live cast member Molly Shannon from 1995 to 2001. She was considered the first breakout character from the new 1995 cast and a significant marker of the increased influence of women writers on the show in the 1990s. Um, This character, I did not ever, I never thought she was funny on the show. Not at all. I always skipped the fucking bits that she was in because I just thought she was fucking annoying. And so the the prospect of sitting through an entire movie with this character sounds just like wretched beyond belief. It sounds like going to like a fucking Southeast <laughs> Asian jail, dude. That your fucking feet get hit at the bottom hit the bottom of your feet with those fucking uh bamboo rods and shit. Like, no, this movie is fucking awful. So the whole bit basically is that she's like a weird, awkward, horny, repressed fucking Catholic schoolgirl. And that's pretty much it. And she likes to smell her armpits like Paul just did. Like, Yeah, that's the only thing I remember about the bit was she would always do that. Yeah. Like, I mean, okay. I, I will tell you that the first time I ever did that was because of this character. Well, there you go. Uh, here's the trailer. So it starts, it starts with her as a kid, and she's like, makes her little wish or whatever. Out with, and to kiss like this. To dream the impossible dream. Cuts to her <laughs> kissing a tree. The unreachable star. <gasps> that tree kiss is in all of the uh, material, all the promotional material for this. So I went and looked at the tree kiss full scene. It's horrible. It's it's like. She basically just fucking makes out with that tree uh, for like a minute. Yeah. Did anyone check on that tree afterwards? At one point, she's like talking about like spanking the tree. She's like, yeah, I'm going to spank your yeah. naughty tree ass. Ow, 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 By the ow, way, tree. dude, all the dendrophiles in the chat just came. Yeah, they're like, where's this movie been all my life? I think there's some important questions this movie raises. And I, I, I hate to go back to new cancel culture thing, but. Was that tree asked if it consented? That to tree did not consent. I mean, that tree did not consent. Came onto that tree hot and heavy. That tree was abused by her. That Sad. makes it hotter to me. That the tree yeah. didn't wow, want Paul. it. The tree didn't even want it. And of course, they fucking slap Will Ferrell in it. Like, they well, yeah. Slap I mean, it's a fucking else. 90. I mean, that you can't shit on it for that. It's a 90s yeah. fucking. It's almost SNL obligatory. Movie. It's gonna have Will Ferrell in it. Oh damn. See. That's how she dreams of being kissed one day. Yeah. So I have to kiss trees no more. And so, yeah, the whole spoof. her whole uh, quest in the movie is to get fucking with Will Ferrell. So, you know, and she's super awkward. Yep. And she's awkward. <laughs> it's funny because she's awkward. Awkward. Dude, I always you know thought, what? see, I was a teenager when this shit was popular, and I uh-huh. I remember thinking back when I was a teenager, like, dude, if I was in a fucking Catholic high school, I'd break fucking Mary Catherine Gallagher off. She wouldn't have to make out with that tree no more. You know what I mean? She'd uh-huh. get it. She's not looking too well, bad in the little fucking Catholic schoolgirl uniform and shit. She's clearly dying for it. You know what I mean? I'd have broken her I was her like, off. look, any port in the storm. Yeah. If she needs it, I've got it. You know what? I've obviously gone too easy on you, Paul. What? No. It's no, TJ, this is actually this is bad. actually violence. This is violence, you doing this. You putting this up is violence. Violence against trans and NB people. <laughs> the it's outrageously packed. funny adventure. A comedy that proves love is a many gendered thing, starring Pat from Saturday Night Live. This movie, it's Pat, this the movie. movie. Is ahead of its time, Paul. It's a trailblazing film. The year, 1994. The reviews. The film actually, I didn't even pull a review thing. I just want to tell you that this review, this sits at 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I was not able to find a defender of this film. Um, I you. Box office, $60,000 on an $8 million budget. Ouch. Yeah. I cannot believe they spent $8 million on this. They got brutalized on this. So a little history. Uh, Pat debuted on uh, December 1st, 1990 with John Goodman hosting. Uh, In the sketch, uh, Bill 
played by Kevin Nealon, is uh, thanking a friend over the phone for his new job, then asks whether Bill's supervisor is a man or a woman. Before he gets an answer, he has to hang up when Pat enters. Bill asks, do you have a boy, girl, are you married? Pat explains that uh, I'm, I'm telling you how this bit works because this is the entire movie. And right. I want you the just whole, realize the that whole this thing is, is, is whole, that yeah, the whole people, thing is that, every, everybody's always trying to figure out whether Pat is a man or a woman. And they always ask pointed questions. And Pat always has some way of getting like answering the question without actually answering it. That's the whole right. bit. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> every fucking it. time. That's it. That's the, no, no, that's the entire premise. Like, so this is yet another example. And I think this is really like the problem with these SNL movies of them trying to stretch a premise that maybe kind of works in like three minutes and be like, hey, this is a whole movie. I bet you we could make a whole movie out of that. And it turns out that like other than uh, like with Wayne's World, maybe it worked because those characters had some some other dimensions that you could explore. But in this, it's literally one bit that you is, you fucking have stretched into like a 90 minute runtime. Is Pat a, a man or, or a woman? This movie is pretty much universally despised. It has no fucking audience. Uh, it's, I don't know. There's probably someone out there that likes it, but. They should be sent to a fucking rehabilitation. I mean, look at the upvote yeah. down votes. Yeah. There's a lot I mean, of people somebody, out there that like it. Somebody's like, it's Pat. It's nice to see how Jonah Hill got his start. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> Oh, that's a mean fucking comment. Yet wondrously provocative. A cultural event of apocalyptic significance. It's almost as if what? it may disturb you. It may even shock you. Just leave me alone. Oh, God. What the hell are you? Whoa. What do you think? <laughs> are you a brother? And then it's the fucking copyright music part. Freak out. Boom, 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 boom. Or a sister. Well, I'm an only child. Yeah. Well, I'm an only child. I'm an only child. Isn't this premise wearing thing yet? <laughs> Don't worry, it's gonna keep going. <laughs> it's gonna get the uh, whole lot I, thinner. I remember seeing this movie, like, and the only thing scene I remember seeing as a kid was like Pat falls down some stairs and it's like my nuts, and they're like, oh. And then, like, Pat pulls out a pack of nuts, like they're broken. Like, I broke my nuts. And it's like, get it? It's like, oh! <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. As God is my witness, I will uncover the mystery <laughs> that is Pat. Pretty creepy, huh? Pleased to meet you. Gorgeous. Do you have a photo of you in the nude? Yes, I do, sir. I need. I'm in hell now. You never know when Aunt Wilma's gonna stop by for lunch. <laughs> it's a word for what you are. Charismatic? <laughs> this summer, if you think it's a man. Pat, I'm in a towel. Should I be embarrassed? Ouch. If you're positive it's a woman. Oh, this is something, something we'll, we'll both, both enjoy. enjoy. Oh. Then there's one thing for sure. What's past laundry like? It was, you know, bras, panties, boxer shorts, jock straps. It's Pat. So can someone just go up to Pat and say, <laughs> just, like... Doesn't this feel like one of the fake trailers before fucking, um... What's that? Uh, Tropic Thunder? Yeah. Like, yeah. just, like, sitting in the movie, they're like... Not, not to mention, if someone's really that curious about Pat's gender, just a ask Pat. Or it seems like something you, that you'd, like, see in, on, like, that one of the Hell channels and stay tuned, <laughs> like, flipping oh, through. Oh, God. Like, Ugh. it's Pat! Come and do $60,000. Hey, Pat. <laughs> Take this out. Wait, no, say, wait. Funniest fucking joke coming oh, right now. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. You got to hear this fucking, this is the funniest fucking joke. Oh, Pat. Is that a banana in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> no, it's a banana. No, it's a banana. It's Pat. <laughs> it's Pat. This, I don't know. Did they have no other ideas for fucking movies? It's like they just take the same joke over and over again in an hour and 17 minutes of it. Yeah. All right, Pat. But, but, I'm sick of this. Do you have a cock or a pussy? 
Well, I'm actually allergic to pet dander. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, you, you know, know what? It's or, time. Or, or it'd be like, oh, I have a cock. Really? Yeah. Want to see him? Yep. Uh, you can't just you can't do with Pat. <sighs> Fuck Pat. <sighs> Pat deserves a fucking swift death. Not Stuart Smalley, dude. No. Stuart saves his family. I actually do not know this one. You know what the saddest thing about this movie yeah. is? Vincent D'Onofrio's in it. Like an actual year talented nine. actor was wasted on this film. The year is 1995, sir. The reviews. It isn't good enough. It isn't smart enough. And doggone it, most people won't like it. Once again, Variety. Coming you with the quips. Variety, TJ. A Variety has the best fucking quips on these a lot of times. Look, Variety knows what they're talking about. Uh, box office, 900000 on a $6.3 million budget. History of the bit. Stuart Smalley is a fictional character created and performed by comedian and uh, satirist Al Franken. The character originated on the television show Saturday Night Live in a mock self-help show called Daily Affirmations with Stuart Smalley. Uh, it first aired on the show's February 9th, 1991 episode hosted by Kevin fucking Bacon. This is actually one I had never heard of. I did not know this movie even existed until did I did I. the research for this. But here is the trailer for it. PG-13. Parents strongly caution. Mm, it might be inappropriate. I'm going to do a terrific show today because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Hello, I'm Stuart Smalley. Ever since I was a kid, go, go, go! I knew there was something wrong with my family. <laughs> my father grew up in the Great Depression, his mother's, so he wasn't very supportive. Is Sir Eagle getting a little nervous? <laughs> and my mother was much better at cooking than nurturing. What was your name again? Waste of space. <laughs> Which is probably why I became kind of a guru of the self-help movement. Is there any part of you want to fucking watch this? No. No. Is there any part of your being that's like, huh, maybe this is a... Maybe this has got something going on, you know? This is one of those movies where it just looks like everyone is struggling to make really bad material into something when they have, in fact, nothing. Like, I, I just feel the desperation just oozing off of this fucking movie. Well, let's keep on moving because we got a lot more to go through and not much time to do it in. So here's Coneheads. Oh, I remember the Coneheads. Dude, dude. Coneheads is actually a good flick. I, you know what? When I pulled this, I'm like, if Paul's going to defend one of these turds, it's going to probably be Coneheads. No, the, uh, this movie is actually legitimately a funny movie. It's a good mm -hmm. movie. Uh-huh. So the year was 1993. The review is, I expected stupid humor, silly humor, or bizarre humor, but not no humor Ooh. from real views. Box office, $21 million on an unknown budget. Probably probably lower than $21 million, though. Uh, history of the bit. The Coneheads are a fictional family of extraterrestrials with uh, bald conical heads uh, created for the series uh, for a series of recurring sketches on Saturday Night Live. They first appeared on uh, January 15th, 1977 premiere, which is uh, season two, episode 11. So very early on in SNL history. Um, we'll take a quick look at some of the trailer. Dude, Chris Farley's great in this. It's actually an interesting story. I'll turn this down a little so to Paul could talk over it. Um, yeah, uh, as far as these pieces of shit go, this one's not too bad. I rewatched it recently. It's really not good, in my opinion, but. It's the story of two aliens, Beldar and Primat. It at least has characters and like some semblance of like having a right to be a movie that yeah. a lot of these don't yeah. like the premise doesn't wear instantly thin i kind of like that they were they had the weird cone shaped heads as a kid so i remember like being a little kid and watching that and i kind of liked how they were just fish out of water shit for them it was a chance to build a new yeah dream. so anyway it's not it's not too bad you could do worse but um Oh, here's worse. This you is can, proof the worst you can you do, can do worse. Do. Yeah, yeah you worst. can do much worse. So talk about stretching a th premise that uh, the thin, I mean, like this is like the thinnest of premises. Um, this fucking bit on SNL was basically just Will Ferrell and Chris Kattan. What is love? Baby, don't hurt. They just did that. 
And then they'd fucking hit on a woman and then she'd show some interest and they would instantly like start fucking basically yeah. like dry humping her on the dance Acting floor. Creepy. And she'd be like, yeah. oh my God, and just run away. And they'd be like, okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. You know, and then they go back to the bar and keep doing their dun, 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 dun. And that's the whole bit. And they're like, you know what? That'd be a good movie. Um, no, it no. Turns out, no. So the year was 1998. The review is basically a longer version of its poster from CNN. Uh, box office, $30 million on a $17 million budget. So it did make a little money. Uh, history of the bit. It premiered in 1996, Satire of Nightclub. I just, I broke down what the bit is for you a minute ago. So I don't need another breakdown of that. But it premiered in 96. And um, this is, uh, I guess I don't have the trailer for that one. There's probably just too much copyrighted music. This is uh, The Ladies Man. From 2000. Oh, my God. I forgot about this. Yeah. Uh, this is actually the one that finally killed these SNL movies for 10 years. Because you notice that through the 90s, after the success of Wayne's World, they were just pumping them out. But oh, so many yeah. of them were like huge, resounding fucking failures. And none of the ones that were hits were huge hits. They had no backing. They really had no backing behind it. Like popular, like, okay, this really needs to be a movie. Wayne's World. There's a lot of people that are fans of it. And they made the movie. There was like, there was a lot of excitement. I remember as a kid, like Wayne's World. This but is like, another, none of these other ones had that. This is another shit premise that like worked, I guess, for an SNL bit, but it's not enough to flesh out a movie. It's a dude with a lisp who thinks he's hot to women, but isn't. Uh, so the, re- the year is 2000. The review is the ladies man joins the crop of terrible movies based on Saturday Night Live skits and offers serious competition for a title as the worst. Whoever said that obviously has not seen It's Pat. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is pretty bad. Uh, so box office, $13.7 million on a $24 million budget. Yeah, if you want a guaranteed loser, I guess just hire, a, <laughs> what, what was it, Lauren Michaels and SNL to make you a movie. Yeah, so a little history. Leon Phelps, also known as the ladies' man, was a Saturday Night Live character played by Tim Meadows during the 1990s. The sketch was that of a broadcast program in which Phelps, a young, suave black man, would give dubious romantic advice and lovemaking tips. The ladies' man openly proclaimed that he would court any woman at all, including skanks, providing the woman weighs no more than uh, 250 pounds. A night of romance would generally center around a bottle of Cavossier. So here's the trailer for this. One glance will seduce you. Yeah. There's that Kavosi. So they love these misdirection trailers for sure. Yeah. Dude, Kovacier really fell off as like a fucking upper crusty drink. You don't even hear rappers talking about Kovacier yeah. anymore. No one likes no Kavosier no mo. Pass the Kavosier. You're his forever. What's happening? He is Leon Phelps. If you have a romantic query and you are under the age of 50 uh, and you're not freaky or disgusting, please give us a call. The ladies' man. Barney, is that you? Do you have a man? You yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, he's a, he's got a lisp and, you know, he's a ladies' man. Even though he's lispy and shit, and there's like no, there's like no reason he should be a ladies' man, but he is, and he he basically well, here, runs it, around. I think it's ex- I think it's explained in this scene where the uh, all the husbands of the women that he's fucked catch up to him here. Leon Phelps. Oh my god! Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So he's oh, just that's a, basically he, it. He's just he's got just a, a giant old palooza. He's just got a giant cock, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. All of his other advice and shit doesn't really matter. Just giant. Have a giant dick. And you're good. He's like, look, I got what. So this out. movie was so bad it actually killed the SNL movies for ten years. But <sighs> what a relief! So I mean that that happened in 2000. So we're we're in 2021. So you know, do the math. Yeah, we're good. We're in the clear. No, you're not in the clear. Fuck you, TJ. Fuck you, you piece of fucking fat shit. McGruber. McGruber, dude. McGruber. God, this is a fucking terrible fucking movie. McGruber. Oh. This is from. It's like MacGyver. <laughs> Get it? Year 2010. Review. Some of these two minute sketches look a little thin at 87 to 92 minutes. You don't say. Box office, 9.3 million on a $10 million budget. History. McGruber was a recurring uh, 
a sketch on the NBC television series Saturday Night Live, first appearing on the show in January 2007. The sketch is a parody of the 1985-1992 adventure series MacGyver. MacGyver. Yeah. Uh, note, this film has achieved a cult following, and a TV series based on the character has been greenlit to stream on Peacock. So you have not seen the last of Mac Gruber, Scotty. How do you feel about that? I have seen the last of McGruber. You have not seen <laughs> yeah, the last I have, of McGruber, Scotty. I will Scotty. not be watching that dog shit. And people, people that are signed up for Peacock are morons. I think Peacock is actually going to be free. I don't care if it's free. It's too much. Too much. Two days ago, a Russian convoy carrying the X5. Another fake out trailer, by the way. They really like that shit. Well, yeah, yeah. you kind of have to. It's like, ooh, maybe we can trick the audience into being interested. The warhead got jacked. Yesterday, reliable sources informed us it's made its way to U.S. soil. I'm going to turn... And yeah, that is Val Kilmer, by the way. Yep. Washington, D.C. into a pile of ash. It's a very tall order. We need the best. Get me McGruber. I'm in. What? I'm in. Hello, McGruber. I'm in. It's a parody of action movies. I'm in. Yeah, man. It's, it's only like fucking 20 years too late to parody fucking <laughs> <80s> action movies. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Woo! Right on time, SNL. That hot. Strike while the iron's fucking hot. Hey, let's do a parody of MacGyver fucking 30 years yeah, later. Yeah, bro. When no one gives a shit anymore. I don't think most kids in 2020 even know what the fuck up. MacGyver is. So, yeah. yeah. They probably actually have more success trying to reboot MacGyver at this point than... Than this shit. Look great. All right. This spring. Gotcha. <laughs> You're the one he wants to come after. Why can't you be dressed like you? Because you are. Go, go, go. Anyway, it sucks. Um, MacGruber, dude. That's it. That's it. That's everything. Wow. Thanks well. for the torture, TJ. Yeah, you're welcome. Get Thank out of you here. Thank you for the torture zone. Get out of here, y'all.